Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Highway to Hell. And today we're going to talk about a little bit about Alejandra. I don't have any of her comics physically. I think she only lasted about 10 or 11 issues or maybe nine. I can't remember. It wasn't that many issues, unfortunately. I thought she was a neat character. Um, and she did show up in the, obviously that one shot we went over in a previous episode where it was the uh, symbiote of vengeance, absolute carnage tie-in. That's where she died. Um, so obviously I have that issue and that's, that was in another video. But uh, real quickly, I'll put up on screen like a cover. I think she showed up around the Fear Itself storyline. And I don't remember fully how she got her powers. I think she also appears in a storyline we're going to talk about coming up. So you'll definitely get a little bit more Alejandra on the Venom vlog. We're going to talk about her when she crossed over with uh, X-23, Red Hulk, and uh, you know, obviously Agent Venom when they kind of become the Circle of Four, which is like a, a new version of the new Fantastic Four, kind of, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more Alejandra and get into her story there and her backstory in that series, like when we make that video for Venom Vlog. But here, you know, I don't own any of her books. There was just like one series. Like I said, it was part of Fear Itself. And then it ran a couple issues past that and it got canceled, which was a bummer because like I said, I thought she was a neat character. Then eventually they killed her. And I think they had a big bigger plan for her with, you know, Ed Breeson. He's, he was sending a lot of ghostwriters back to hell. So, and there was a lot that were down there. Jason Aaron was writing. So it was clear there was like a right hand talking to the left hand thing about a potential plan. And I don't know what's going to happen of it. Maybe Jason Aaron will take over the reins from here. We'll see. So what we'll start with then, since we can't talk about Alejandra, we'll talk about Robbie Reyes, because I do have his entire collection, uh, his run, uh, starting with issue one here. I really like this. I grew up an older brother. I liked uh, the character of Robbie. He looks out for his younger brother. His younger brother is in a wheelchair and has his own struggles uh, regarding that. And they get picked on. They don't live, you know, he lives in, he's kind of poor, so they don't live in a, a a great neighborhood, I guess. Uh, and Robbie street races to try to make ends meet for his family. And, you know, he ends up becoming possessed by the spirit of a, uh, like a horrible criminal <laughs> and killer. And, uh, and then he's able to transform his car into, you know, his, his like, like Ghost Rider does his motorcycle, but Robbie literally transforms his car into this, you know, mean machine uh, from hell. <laughs> so I got Felipe Smith. He signed the, the cover. I think I got this at Meltdown Comics. He did a signing there, which was really cool. Um, and Felipe is such a nice guy. And actually, I really love this character. This character did show up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And they talked about the dark hold and stuff. And that was literally the, I actually stopped watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. after like season two. And then I came back in with Ghost Rider. And then I continue to watch it up until now. Um, I, I'm behind on this last season. But uh, so I think there's still a season or two I got to watch between, uh, you know, season two and the Ghost Rider appearance. But uh, I liked the episodes of Ghost Rider. I thought uh, Gabriel Luna, who played him, did a really good job of Robbie. And it was a shame because I think they were going to do a Ghost Rider TV show with Gabriel Luna. And that has now since been canceled, which is a bummer because I wanted to see that guy come back in any form, whether it was cartoon or live action. I would have liked to have seen more Ghost Rider stuff. So hopefully Marvel has some plans for Ghost Rider. I always said you can show him have an appearance in the next Doctor Strange movie. You can show the spirit itself in hell, you know, the Ghost Rider chained to like a rock or something. And maybe he's begging to be set free or something. And maybe Stephen Strange or someone does. And then that spirit goes to Earth. And that could be a setup for a Ghost Rider movie later on. You could do Danny Ketch. Don't do Johnny Blaze. <laughs> do do somebody else. And and uh, Robbie Reyes already had his appearance on Agents of Shield. So to me, I'm like, do Danny Ketch? Like, just make a Danny Ketch. Um, so anyway, so we have issue one here. I have one signed and one not signed, uh, so that I can read it. Um, then I also have issue number two and issue number three. This is going to be a quick video for for at least for this part, at least. Um, but yeah, so and because it's been a while since I've read these, so I don't remember the full story on some of them. I got the variant for number three. I can't remember why, but I bought this at Golden Apple. Um, I think I it was one of those instances where I'm like, do I have issue three? I couldn't remember. So I saw this on the shelf and I picked it up. Uh, so I was like, yeah, it's only five bucks. Um, then we have issue four. This is Trad Moore doing the artwork too. Uh, if you, Trad Moore did the art of, uh, what was it? The Silver Surfer Black storyline that Donny Cates uh, did recently. So uh, I like his artwork. He did a couple indie books that I really liked. And we had him on our show, um, Nerd Nation Radio, which I did with my friend Gene. And I, and we talked about Trad and his work and stuff on that show a lot. And Gene was a huge fan and he got me into Trad stuff. Um, you know, and he was doing like indie books, like I said at the time. And we I think we had him on the show and talked about those indie books. So of course, when I heard he was doing a Marvel book and it was Ghost Rider, I was like, I gotta pick it up. And then Felipe, and then I got to know Felipe and I loved his, I love his stuff. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, then I have issue five here. 
issue six. This is really cool. This street art thing. Um, I think this might have even appeared in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think there was someone in the show, they like walked by and there was a, a mural of Ghost Rider in their neighborhood, I think. So that could be, I think that's from, the sh I think the show did that. Um, Damian Scott, who I love his art too, uh, came in and did the, some of the issues here. Uh, so this is issue seven and then issue eight. This one has Johnny Blaze showing up, as you can see on the cover there. So, you know, introducing the two of them to each other, um, which is pretty cool. And then you have issue nine, because obviously you're like, oh, we got a new Ghost Rider. Johnny Blaze is going to take an interest in that, obviously. <laughs> so I'm glad they did that. And we have issue nine there. We have issue 10. And again, most of this is uh, Robbie with his spirit, which is like this the spirit of this killer, this hardcore mob guy killer dude. And uh, and so it's them kind of like back and forth thing. So it's not like that he has a good spirit attached to him. Um, and it's not a spirit that always listens to Robbie either. And it's a spirit that's easily corrupted, as we see in some of the Jason Aaron stuff, which we'll show off here in a second. Um, but then we have issue 11 here, and this is where the series got canceled. Issue 12, final issue. And I was really bummed that this book got canceled because I was thoroughly enjoying it. Um, and it's crazy to think that this one you know, ran longer than the current one. The current issue, uh, or the current run ended at issue seven. Obviously there's other reasons for that. There's a pandemic, there's other things, but, but still it's like, I was really hoping that I thought, honestly, I thought Ed Breeson was going to get to tell his story. And that just shows you that there's no guarantees in comics. Like, so when books end and you're sad about them, it's like, it sucks. Cause some of us are sad because we support the books. I bought every issue of this, our friend Allie, she bought every issue of Scream, um, you know, and I feel bad because I actually like the character of Andy and Scream and Patricia and, you know, Donna Diego, and I wasn't buying the book. I bought issue one, and then I was like, oh, I'll wait for the trade, and I feel stupid for doing that because, again, there's no guarantee in comics. When you have that mentality of, oh, I'll wait for the trade, doesn't, you may not get it, you know, like you have to, you run the risk of, by not supporting books monthly, you not only hurt your comic store, but you hurt, you know, the book itself. And granted, some of us don't have a choice because of money. For me, Scream was dropped mainly because of money. Um, and uh, it's it's a bummer. I wish, I, I was like, I feel like I could have scrounged together the $4 a month to support that book. And I wish I did now. Um, and now and now we're facing the same thing with Ghost Rider. So it got canceled once. Robbie Reyes gets brought back one more time for one more run. And I think they had a plan to make this an ongoing too. I think they wanted to go past the number of issues this one did. But it didn't. This one only lasted five issues. Um, and they also do a new Fantastic Four. It's called Four on the Floor. And this has uh, X-23, Amadeus Cho, Hulk. Um, and then they reveal the fourth member to be Silk because it's got to be a spider character. And Robbie Reyes is the Ghost Rider. So again, kind of doing the Fantastic Four, new Fantastic Four thing. Uh, I feel I feel like that's kind of typical. <laughs> like it, it seems like a go-to thing. And it makes sense. Like I feel like if someone's like, hey, man, you're going to write, uh, you know, a Hulk issue or you're going to or a, a run on Hulk or you're going to do a mini series on a, on this spider, spider Gwen. I'd be like, OK, how do we get Spider Gwen to make her own version of the, the Fantastic Four? And <laughs> like, I don't know, I, I feel like that's an urge that I don't know if I'd be able to be strong enough to resist because it's such a cliche at this point now. But I, I, I feel like I would give in. So, uh, so yeah, so you have all these four teaming up to make the four on the floor. And like I said, there was the circle of four. And then before that, the new Fantastic Four and. It's just funny. So, boom, final issue, issue five. Uh, this book, once again, got canceled after just five issues. Such a bummer. Ghost Rider, th it's funny, a lot of these characters, at one point, they sold so many copies. Obviously, I got the Venomized cover for number five. Had to have that one. That's just too cool. Because um, I was like, oh, Robbie Reyes is a Venom? That's cool. I like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, nothing's, nothing's guaranteed in comics, so support the best you can. And I know sometimes just by supporting it doesn't mean it's going to stick around, but you know, at least, uh, you won't have regrets like I do with Scream and some of the other books where I'm like, these are really good books. Like Mary Jane, I just started getting into that and it's canceled. I'm like, God dang it. You know? And again, that was a money situation, but, uh, it's, it's just tough, man. It's, it's tough. I wish Marvel would just do Marvel Comics Presents. Um, and make it a flip book like they did in the 90s. And that way you could have a Mary Jane story in there. Then you could have a Ghost Rider story on one. And then you make it four stories, two on each side. And that way all these books can maybe live longer because people might be buying it for Ghost Rider. And then, but they're like, oh, but I'm reading Mary Jane. And, you know, and, and that's pretty neat. And then they'll flip it over and it's like, okay, here's a, a Silk story. And then, you know, and also like, you know, someone else, like another character. Uh, so you put like a mainstream character on each side 
like they did in the 90s, and then you put in like a, a C or a D list character or someone who just maybe can't sustain their own book for more than a couple months, and they might have a longer lifespan in a book like that. So maybe Marvel, maybe take a, take note by canceling all these books, you know, like maybe put them all, all these characters in one book at some point, Marvel Comics Presents, and bring that back, but make it a flip book, do something cool with it. Like that last one you did where it was basically um, Charles Soule writing a Daughter of Wolverine book, it's like, come on what a waste of what a waste of time and paper like oh let's just let's just have a, the daughter of Wolverine it's like we already have enough kids of Wolverine like we don't need any more man Ghost Racers was pretty neat uh, Felipe Smith got to come back one last time and do a book that brought all the Ghost Riders in and so I only have the first issue of this in physical form the others I own digitally um but I, I like this book a lot actually Juan Gideon uh, who was a artist on Venom recently too a great artist uh you know, and uh, Tara Bunvelin, I think, did some of the inks or something and colors. It's a great book, honestly. It this was really fun, and I think a lot of you guys would probably agree that if you've read this, this was part of the Secret Wars Battle World stuff, and this was a really neat thing. It's focused on Robbie Reyes, but it was this big race through this world that just looked like hell. <laughs> Pretty much it was hell. And uh, and you got all the Ghost Riders to come back. So like Danny, Johnny, um, you know, like the, the uh, caretaker, whoever he was, the original, uh, the, I think Kale, Noble Kale might have been in here too. And I think Barbara Ketch was in here. There was cameos and Easter eggs galore. But I love what uh, Felipe Smith did. And this was kind of his goodbye to the character of, of Ghost Rider and Robbie. And then Robbie went on to be in Jason Aaron's book. So I have issue one of this somewhere. I couldn't find it. I had it signed uh, by Gabriel Luna. He came and did a signing at Golden Apple where he was like, hey, my character is now, you know, like that I played on Agent Shield is now in Avenger. He's an Avenger now because uh, he was a member of, I don't know, I can't remember if he was a member of the Champions or he was a member of some other team. But uh, I don't have every appearance by Robbie Reyes, unfortunately. I just have his main book and then I have some of this run here. So we have this issue where it has Johnny Blaze as the King of Hell show up and talk to Robbie. And then we have this. So this was a prequel to this storyline called Challenge of the Ghost Riders. And this has pretty much every Ghost Rider in it, I think except Danny. I, I was buying this because I thought Danny was going to be in it, and I think he might be in a panel or two in this run, but for the most part, it's, it's not Danny. It's, it's a race between Johnny Blaze and Robbie Reyes, and while they're battling each other, we also have on Earth, the Avengers are fighting the Cosmic Ghost Rider. So you have the Avengers, um, Captain America, Thor, all those guys are fighting Cosmic Ghost Rider, who is a character that I don't really like too much. Uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider is Frank Castle, the Punisher, from an alternate future where he uh, was one of the last surviving humans on Earth after a big war. Then he became Ghost Rider. Then he fought against Galactus and became eventually became a herald of Galactus and then was sent after Thanos and then Thanos beat him down and made him a servant of Thanos or a child of Thanos kind of. So it's power fantasy to the 10, you know, like it, it's such a, oh, wouldn't it be cool if he's this and he's this and you know, how, how much cooler can we make him? How much more powerful can we make him? And it's just, it's like a five-year-old power fantasy thing. So I'm not a big fan of the character Cosmic Ghost Rider, although to give Donny Cates some credit, I do like the issue that came out recently, and I'll put like a cover or two up. Cosmic Ghost Rider has had a, he started off in Thanos Wins, which is a book cut by Donny Cates. Um, and then he went on to be like um, his own miniseries. And Donny wrote one or two of them. And then I think other writers like Paul Shear, who I think is from a comedian from the show The League, which I love The League. He plays Andre. Um, I think he was one of the writers of one of them, but there was like two or three miniseries for Co Cosmic Ghost Rider that have come out. Um, and I, I've read, a, I, I read like one or two of them or started to read a second one and didn't really get into it. But in one of them, there was uh, issue one, the backup storyline was Frank Castle, Cosmic Ghost Rider meeting Frank Castle, current day Punisher. And I thought that was neat. It was a neat little interaction. I give Donnie Cage credit for, for that little short story. Um, but otherwise, I'm not a big fan of Cosmic Ghost Rider. I actually don't even like his look either. Uh, he looks he looks kind of stupid to me. <laughs> the face on his chest and the Legion of Doom spikes. Like, I don't know. He looks kind of silly to me. Um, but uh, but yeah, so he shows up in this. So this one is a race between these two and Cosmic Ghost Rider gets tied into it. And I'll be honest with you, Jason Aaron is not really doing a good job on Avengers to me. Um, Avengers, after the movie... Actually, I would say after Brian Michael Bendis came on, I think Brian Michael Bendis really made the Avengers like this this hardcore selling awesome book. 
Although that was like for me, I grew up an X-Men kid. And when I was a kid, you were either an X-Men fan or an Avengers fan. There were some people who were both, obviously, but it, w- it was usually one or the other. So I grew up an X-Men kid. I never liked the Avengers. I thought they were lame D-list heroes, which they were up until Bendis kind of came in and did Disassembled and kind of put them on a map in a different way. They did Heroes Return or Heroes Reborn. I tried to read that. I never really liked that because it was like Rob Liefeld and stuff. But um, but I think Bendis kind of took them in this direction where he's like, let's make them the Marvel version of the Justice League. And I think that both benefited the Avengers and hurt them. I think it benefited them in sales to some degree and it pulled in people who weren't fans. So I was like, oh, Wolverine and Spider-Man are going to be Avengers now. All right, I, I don't feel like they should be, but I'll still read the book to give it a try. And I kind of liked a little bit of that early Bendis stuff. But uh, but what, you know, I don't know. Like, ever since the movie, though, I feel like they should be the like the, the quintessential. Like what Hickman did was crazy. Like he made like 50 members on the team. He made them like the Justice League Unlimited. There was, they fought Thanos. It was big cosmic things and all this stuff. What Aaron's doing, I just don't like. It's like, oh, let's do a vampire story and we'll have Blade on the team and let's do a man thing stuff and let's have the race of the Ghost Riders. And I just feel like Jason Aaron should not be on the Avengers. He's just not doing a good job. And that's coming from someone who's not even a big Avengers fan. But I guess since I'm not liking what Hickman's doing on X-Men right now, I was kind of hoping to be enjoying an Avengers run at least because I'm like, hey, maybe I can be converted. And I'm not being converted by Jason Aaron stuff. So actually, I don't really like this storyline at all. And I don't like Cosmic Ghost Rider's involvement in it because he just feels shoehorned in. And he battles him for really no reason. It's so dumb. But here's kind of the original Cosmic Ghost Rider. (laughs) It's like people poke fun at Donny Cates for this one. Um, I think Donny, he says he doesn't know that this book existed. We made an episode about that on the Venom vlog. So you can go watch our thoughts on that. But this was my first exposure to Cosmic Ghost Rider. This is a Ghost Rider of the future. Um, And he's got a flying motorcycle. He doesn't have a dumb face on his chest, but he does have big shoulder pads. They don't have spikes on him because the spikes are on the wrists and on the forearms or on the biceps. So, uh, and forearms. So, yeah, this is his. And he also has another appearance after these two issues. Um, There's another appearance of Cosmic Ghost Rider in an annual, I think, of um, Guardians of the Galaxy. But I don't have that issue, unfortunately. But, uh, But, yeah, so... This is just a miscellaneous one. So yeah, we talked a little bit about Alejandro. We showed off this Cosmic Ghost Rider, you know, the old school one. We talked about the newer Cosmic Ghost Rider. We talked about, uh, you know, Robbie Reyes, obviously. He was the focus of this episode. So you guys let me know what you think. Like, do you have um, any say in any of these versions of Ghost Rider? I mean, this covers pretty much everyone else except Barbara Ketch, but we kind of talked about her a little bit in the, you know, the Danny Ketch run because they had that minus one issue that featured her. But, uh, but for the most part, we kind of gone through all the other hosts of Ghost Rider except one, and that is the Ghost Rider of the year 2099. So the next episode, um, maybe the next two even, we'll be talking about that. Maybe we'll, we'll go through the collection of Ghost Rider 2099, and then we'll review Ed Breeson's one shot as well. And, and uh, either we'll do that, maybe we'll do it all in one episode, and then we'll save episode 25 for a dual movie review where we talk about the two Ghost Rider live action movies. I don't know. Maybe we'll figure it out, but we'll do something. But uh, you guys, let me know what you think of all this. And if you have a favorite of these Ghost Riders, are you an Alejandra fan? Are you a Robbie Reyes fan? Are you a Cosmic Ghost Rider fan with Frank Castle? Do you like the, you know, the Guardians of the Galaxy 90s Ghost Rider from the the, the 30th or, you know, the year 3000 or whatever, uh, 3001 or whatever it was? Um, Let me know what you think all that in the comments below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. And again, it's kind of a bummer that the series is ending, but it's also ending at the right time because we're going to get an even 25 episodes out of talking about Ghost Rider. And uh, I can't wait to talk about 2099. Actually, I think besides Danny Ketch, I think Zero from 2099 is my other favorite Ghost Rider. And so I'm really excited to talk about him and his world and also reviewing the Ed Breeson one shot. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll see you guys with all that in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in hell. Peace.